you probably keep seeing websites that are selling you chat GPT prompts. And honestly, you've probably seen a ton of videos telling you what the best format is for writing great prompts. Candidly, it's tough to get through all the noise. So I'm just going to jump in with the methodology that I've been developing for the last several months and assure you that if you hang out with me for a few minutes, you're going to learn a ton. All right, so let's go. So I craft a prompt with the acronym craft. Craft stands for context, role, action, format, and target or target audience. Each of these might seem simple, but they do warrant explanation because buried in the details is where you find the most value. In the description of this video, I'll review a few of the key tricks and links that I mentioned, and I'll have them in a nice cohesive format for you. All right, with that, let's jump in. The C in craft is context. Imagine that ChatGPT has more than a trillion parameters and that each time you start a dialogue, it has literally no idea where you're coming from. Are you a software engineer, a farmer, a teenage cat owner, a motivational speaker, an aspiring actor, a car fanatic? It has no idea. So you need to provide context when you're helping chat to narrow its massive set of parameters down to the specific set of needs that you have for it. The results is a much better output from chat. But how do I write the best context section? Tell chat who you are, what your larger goals are, and any relevant details about your product, your website, your software program, your industry, your environment, whatever is relevant. The key here is to overshare as it relates to the needs of your chat string. Don't tell the prompt things that aren't related to your goals because that'll just confuse chat even more. The best way to show this is probably through an example. Like many people, I use chat GPT to write content for my websites. So what I'm going to be showing you will be specific to chat writing articles as it's probably the best way to demonstrate my point. But these concepts can be applied to just about any area and I'll give you a whole bunch of examples as we move through it. All right, so right at the start, as we jump into my example, you can see that I haven't forgotten about priming and I have made a bunch of other videos about priming so you can check them out. I start by telling ChatGPT that I'm going to feed it with information for it to ingest. Next, I define the context of my world. So in this case, I say, I'm the owner of a new medical product called Icewinder. Icewinder is a cooling gel filled wrap that a user can fasten to their arm or leg to help reduce muscle swelling and soreness. I go on and give it a few more details here. Next, I show the key features of my product. And this is super helpful to further define really my world and the context of the product that I'm trying to share. Lastly, I say that Icewinder is a new product. It's not well known. I would like to include informational and persuasive blogs on my e-commerce site to improve SEO and customer traffic. Again, this is really helpful because it gives chat context as to what we're trying to accomplish with this particular blog. Once I finish with the context section, of course, I just tell it that I needed to ingest this information and to confirm that it's read it. So now we're moving into role. If you used chat before, you probably have an idea of what this means. The role is like the actor you'd like chat to embody for the output. There is literally no limit to this. The more creative you can be, the more unique and interesting results you'll get. When I'm describing the role, I like to provide two types of expertise. The first one is functional capability, and the second one is a domain area. The functional capability, for example, is a content writer, or an expert chef, or a productivity expert, or a world famous coach. Now a domain area, on the other hand, can be something like fitness, or Mediterranean food, or lean manufacturing, or badminton, or astronomy, or whatever. Including these functional capabilities and domain areas really helps chat understand how it should act for you. And I found it does a really much better job with results than just saying, act like a communication expert or something simple like that. To simplify this, I've added a list of examples on my website. It includes everything from speechwriter and coding assistant to trivia game host and language translator. Next, make sure to state the tone of voice and the writing style. I've also added a list of examples of tone of voice and writing style options on my website. Unfortunately, I can only add 5,000 characters to this video description and all that won't fit. But don't worry, none of my stuff is locked. You don't need an email or a login. Just go to the site and grab it. It's there, it's free, have at it. So now, let's see how this works with my article example. Here I say, you are an expert copywriter who writes detailed and thoughtful blog articles that are search engine optimized for our specific target audience. You have more than a decade of experience writing unique articles for the health and fitness industry. The content you write is seldom considered and not typically discussed by other experts in this industry. You have an informational tone of voice and a persuasive writing style. You'll note that one of the things I like to say is that chat is 
known for a unique perspective. As a result, Chad is highly regarded by other industry experts. I might say something like, please provide insights that most experts seldom consider or that are typically not discussed by thought leaders in the industry. Or I could say, write in a way that challenges conventional thinking and may provoke readers to embrace a new perspective. These are all really great ways to get Chad to create new and interesting concepts that are not just run-of-the-mill stuff you see all the time. Okay, so next, we're gonna jump into the action section. This is the part where you're actually instructing the work. So, what am I dropping in here? You might tell it that it's gonna be writing JavaScript, creating a financial plan, telling me my horoscope, creating a travel itinerary, advising me on etiquette, preparing me for an interview, whatever it is. These are all the key action elements that you're asking chat to perform on your behalf. So, let's jump into my example here. Here are some of my key tricks when I'm talking about the action dialog box. If you know the output is going to be lengthy, say 500 words or more, tell chat to write it in multiple sections. For example, if you're writing content or software code or a movie script or recipes or whatever, you would say, write the first part of this multiple part content. Once you are done with the first part, I'll ask you to continue writing the other parts. Why do this? Honestly, because it creates great continuity for longer form results which oftentimes is what we're trying to go for here. Next, you want to tell chat that you're trying to achieve something. You have some sort of an objective. So ask it to help you achieve your specific end goal. For instance, if you're writing a blog or article content, make sure you tell chat that you want the output it provides to answer a specific question. That prompt will help you focus the narrative of the output. Next, tell it the key elements you want by saying, please include the following keywords or ingredients or features or data set or column headers, and whatever is relevant to your particular query. Lastly, you might want to tell it to do not self-reference and do not explain what you're doing. For my example, again, I'm using a priming approach, so I say, please provide content based on the context and role I've previously defined. Then I'm telling you to write an 800 plus word blog in two parts. Next, I tell it the data I want it to include in the action, so the article's topic, the question, the answer, and the keywords to include. I also say that I don't want the article to read like an advertisement because candidly, chat sometimes has a way of doing that. So then you can see here that I've said that the blog article is the benefits of cold packs for sore muscles. The question the blog should answer is how does a cold pack reduce inflammation and muscle soreness? And the keywords for this blog are ice pack, compression wrap, sore muscles, and inflammation. Lastly, you can see here that I say that I don't want it to write this like an advertisement. Next, we describe the format we'd like for the output. Why should we even bother with format if we're just asking chat to write text? Most people don't even realize there are a ton of options here and your formatting can make a big difference in the type and quality of your output from chat. For instance, if you're asking for coaching instructions, you might wanna say, write this in a sequentially numbered steps to ensure the reader can follow along. If you're brainstorming ideas, you might want to ask chat to create a table for you. Side note, I've done a totally different YouTube on this, so you can check that out. For website content, try the format of the AIDA marketing formula, or ask it to write the awareness, consideration, conversion, and loyalty funnel format, or ask it to write content based on the book, Build a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Lots of options. For the purposes of my article, you can see that I ask it to write the content in markdown format, including headings and subheadings. So why do we use markdown format? The quick overview is that markdown is a text markup language that adds formatting elements to plain text. This will make the copy paste exercise much easier when you're dropping content to your final posting location because it'll already have the headings and subheadings formatted and in place. Then I ask it for bullet points, a quote, and an external link. This will give my article a much more professional look and feel, as well as improve its SEO. Regarding the external link, what's the best way to go about doing that? The first thing I tried was to have chat do this by itself. Unfortunately, because chat is not currently web enabled, it didn't do a great job. You can see I tried this in an earlier draft and the outcome was awful. It took me into an article about the effects of caffeine on golf performance. <laughs> If you're wondering, a moderate dose of caffeine helped golfers performance slightly. So this result was irrelevant. I think until chat becomes web enabled, you're just going to have to use other research options. Fortunately, there are a ton of research options out there. Ultimately, I went with an app called perplexity.ai, which is a new tool for me. And so far, I really like it. It provides some quick link options here 
as well as the final result with the summary that I ended up using. And then I drop that link into my format section along with the article summary that I pasted as well. As a side note, if you have ChatGPT Premium, there is a plugin called Link Reader that does a nice job of reading the content on a website, even though ChatGPT isn't web enabled. So I'll try that out if you wanna pull the article summary into your dialogue without leaving chat. Oh, and by the way, in case you're looking for a list of AI resources that can help a more specific set of needs, I like using gpte.ai, and no, I don't have any affiliation with them. I'll just show you quickly. It has a ton of AI tools and a nice set of sorting categories at the top. So for instance, we're looking here for results for the AI video category, and it just gives me a nice list of options here that you can use. So as far as formatting tips go, here are a few. I prefer to say, do not use single quotes, double quotes, or any other enclosing characters because chat for some reason has a way of doing that, particularly when it's doing titles. Also, don't bother with language like intersperse long and short sentences. I just don't find it's necessary. For articles, ask it to write in a markdown format, including heading and subheading notation, as I've done in this one. Also, ask it to include bullet points and then include a relevant and specific quote. Lastly, let's talk about target. Your target audience could range anywhere from a coding platform to people you're planning to feed dinner with a new recipe. ChatGPT has literally no idea who it's writing this for, so define it for it. Make sure your target audience is defined according to the level of expertise you want conveyed in the content. For instance, if you're writing instructional content, your audience might be novices who are totally new to your lesson, or they could be experts who have been working in your field for years and this really matters in how chat produces the content. You can see in my target section, I discuss the target persona I'm trying to reach. In this case, it's recreational and professional athletes. These are men and women aged 25 to 60. If you state that your target audience is well-informed and stays current with industry news and information, chat will typically work to write more unique and interesting results for that target audience, not just boring typical stuff that everyone already knows. Of course, I've been using priming, so for this last piece, I'm gonna tell chat to execute, and I've included a few reminders. First one is that I wanted to write the first half of this article, then I will tell it to continue writing. We're doing this because, as I said earlier, we want the content to be longer than 500 words, in my case, 800 words, and it creates a nice bit of continuity from one section to the next once I tell it to please continue. All right, so let's check out these really cool output results here. It's got done a really nice job of creating headings and subheadings that are loaded with my keywords, so I get great SEO from them. I like the paragraph structures. Down here you can see that it's got a link to the article that I suggested, as well as a quote to that article. So it's done a really nice job of including everything that I've requested. Then we can jump down to the end of this section, and you can see that it's done a nice job of creating a segue into the following section. At this point, I say, please continue writing the second half of the blog, and it does a really nice job of continuing the blog. Again, more diverse mixture of language and paragraph sizes, etc. Another set of bullet points and a reference to the link and a quote. And then we get to the very bottom here, you can see that I've asked it to tell me the exact word count for the article, and we're at 814 words. So it's done more than 800 as I requested. So if you want demonstrated proof that the craft approach actually works, you can see that my e-commerce site ranks at the top of the first page for just about all of my keywords, including gel pack acupressure, ice pack acupressure, and cold wrap acupressure. So shameless plug, I know, but if you go to the site, you can see it is not a great site. It's just a very basic Shopify site, and I'm still ranking at the top of the Google search page for the keywords that I'm promoting. Mostly I attribute this to the quality of the content that I'm able to produce, uh, and that's all thanks to ChatGPT and the craft format. So thanks for joining me on the craft methodology and approach. I hope it's been useful for you. Again, you can see all of the tips and tricks listed in the description below. So please check those out, as well as the links to my site, which includes the roles, writing styles, and writing tone on my website, which again is free. Please take the opportunity to go and collect those for yourselves and use them in the future.